Hi and welcome. I'm John and this is Unique War Gaming Terrain. Guys, welcome back. This is the Monday painting video. For everyone that's new, the Monday painting video is a painting video that's voted on by uh, you guys, my viewers, from last week's weekly Wednesday. I show you a heap of models and you guys vote on what you want me to paint for the Monday painting video. For everyone that's regularly here, guys, I would love thank you very much. I'll see you in a second. Right, so last week's weekly Wednesday, there was two votes. One was for the Necron Immortals and one was for the Skatari Rangers. So I have to do D6 roll off. One to three is the Necron Immortals, four to six is the Skatari Rangers. So Necron Immortals. So that's what I'm going to be painting today. So what I, first thing I need to do is I need to uh, grab all the bases. And then when that's done, I need to give them a undercoat. And then I will start working away on them. Now both of these models are very easy to paint. Some people think, oh, the Skatari Ranger, most of their body is all, all male. All cybernetic stuff. So they are pretty straightforward to paint as well. And they're quite immortals again, are very easy to paint as also. So I'm going to crack on with that and I'll come back to you when they're all set up ready to go. So they're undercoated. I put gravel on their base. And then once they're all dried, I gave them a black a black undercoat from the whatever the GW's black spray is called. I can't remember now if it's Chaos Black or Abaddon Black or whatever it's called, but that's the one I used. Some of you are going to ask how I got this amazing effect on the base. All I've done, once I graveled it and then undercoated it all black, so I'm still using drab. I say dry brush, it's not as such a dry brush, it's more of having some on the brush. And just sort of painting the, the, the stones but not trying to get into every little detail just so the top areas get hit so it's a sort of a dry brush but it's not how we typically do a dry brush so on my wet palette the tissue here sorry the tissue is there so i can wipe my brush if someone asks me why is there a bit of tissue sometimes it's usually done just down here off, off camera but sometimes it comes on camera so my wet palette at the moment is only some polish through they're still using drab. So, uh, Runelord Brass and some polished blue. Some of you can say, polished blue, what colour is that? That's an amazing metallic -y blue colour. It's a very old paint. This is it here. It's a very old paint from GW. Polished blue. It's an amazing colour. I was using it for... I was using it for... Um, Chaos Warriors with a Mark of Descent before because it's perfect. And it goes on. You'll see in a second. I'm going to chuck some on the brush now and start working away. So all my Necrons have the same polished blue shoulder pads. So when I put it on, you can see it goes from blue into a silvery blue and into silver at the edges. That's, that's one thing I love about this colour. So then if I really want to um, really make certain areas stand out, like the little line between them, if not, I think that's actually meant to be together, but I can then just give it a, see the, see, see the silver on the back there, and the blue just shimmering away. Um, I can really go to town on that. I'm going to do just the one shoulder pad on this dude first and then come go off camera and do all the shoulder pads there's no point you sitting there watching me do all the shoulder pads for 15-20 minutes now these guys are um, they're not much different from Necron Warriors so I nearly need to be a bit creative with them to make them really pop and to stand out a little bit more so 
But there's that swallow's blue. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to do the rest of the mock camera because there's five dudes here. So I'm going to do the rest of the mock camera and I'll come back to you then. As you can see, I've got some colours in the background here. I'll go through them as I'm applying them to my Necrons. My, my regulars here will know the usual suspects. They can see the usual suspects and go, okay, I sort of know what you're going to do here. But, you know, I'll see you in a second, guys. Right, so they're all done. So now... I'm going to go on to some Rune Lord Brass. And what I'm going to do with the Rune Lord Brass, is this one brush first of all. Is I'm going to paint all of the skeleton parts of their body. So their, their legs, their arms, all those type things. I'm not going to do every single one on camera, but just to give you an idea so you can see the first one being done. And with their chest, I want to get that part done. So. See his hand is that part of his arm there. There's a little so where his wrist is gonna be. There's two little line bits there. I don't paint into it, I just paint from top to bottom. So what that does is a black undercoat will give me sort of shade in that spot. Ironically, probably another week or so, or two, of these being on the, uh, in the boat there, I would have probably just picked them up and just painted them anyway. Because I have seven Necron Warriors to paint, so a Scarab Swarms. I probably would have just done a, a little quick painting video, just nothing fantastic, just a little quick once over. Right, I'm not going to paint his spine. Normally I'd paint the Necron Warrior's spine and all that with this colour. I'm not going to do that here. Because I want to make his spine stand out. Because his spine actually has the bit of the gun going into it. Let's see his hand. Again, with his hand. That's what I need to do. Move these guys off camera. Just want to focus in on them. There we go. So move his hand. Instead of going up and down, I go from side to side. And what that does is, that will catch his hand, but these parts then instead say dark. That's what we're after. So with very little effort, we've actually just shaded the hand. The only thing I hate about zooming in is go off camera. So I do apologise guys, I might zoom back out again in a little bit. Now, with that as it is, that's still great. You could, you, when that's dry, I don't dry brush them in or non oil them or anything like that. But you could do a dry brush on them. You could do a non oil. Like when I say dry brush, I'm talking like... Um, a very light silver, Rune Fang Steel, for example, is a layer of paint and it's silver that comes to mind over the arms and the legs and stuff like that. <laughs> so the raised areas get hit, which then would make it sparkle with more. Canaptic Oil Alloy is another one they can do that with because it would just do it so well. But I'm going to get on with the rest and do the rest of these guys with the Rune Lord, Rune Lord Brass, and I'll come back to you then, guys. Right, so now I've got some, I've got all the paints on my palette, 
but I'm going to get some beaten copper and with this guy first thing I'm going to do is paint this blade on him it's going to, have to be fantastic because the, the paint will run a certain way and the they go silvery as well as being copper and the, uh, the black undercoat will shine very nice let's make it look worn yeah and what I do is I do the gun tips as well so I'm going to have the camera over there hold on Move these guys out of the way. Now, you shouldn't try and focus on anything else. So I'm going off camera again. Because my biggest problem is going off camera. Too excited, too carried away what I'm doing. I forget that. Should be showing you guys. Okay, so there's the weapon, the blade on it, and uh, these parts done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do his spine, but up to here with a little. Let's just color that in. With the spine, I'm going to start on the top like this, really get a nice coverage on the top spikes across his spine. Yeah, just so they really stand out. And then I'm going to just dry brush this. I say dry brush, I'm not actually dry brushing it, I'm just running the brush along. So only the raised area gets hit, so it is technically a dry brush, but not, not in the conventional sense that we, we do. What that's going to do, by doing that little technique, that's going to give me all the bits in between as dark. More on that. Now I'm going to do the rest of them. Right, so now I'm going to get some Retributor armor. And all I'm doing is the bit in the chest here. Just that mad little chest piece. I still don't even know what color to do the heads yet. I might try to look, well, I want to do something different with these guys because Death marks have white heads. The um, Nekomoras have the Moon Lord brass head. So I'm thinking about doing something different to these guys. I'm going to get some Vulcan green now. And here's what I'm going to do with the Vulcan green. The barrels of their gun get Vulcan green. And I'm only going to show you one, and I'll go off and do the rest of them. I 
game, so please go to focus. He's trying to struggle to focus because of what's behind. Let's do here and do this. Get the squeeze and then just get to the touch of the screen. Right, so I'm going to go off camera, do the other four. So I'm going to have a little bit outlandish stuff now. I'm going to paint their faces with corn red. The heads and everything with corn red. Um, it's sort of a crazy idea, so I'm going to do it. Now, when it comes to their face, face, what I'm going to do is just try and just edge it around to leave the skeletal stone, uh, the skeletal uh, structure of the face. This thinner at the bottom, it's going to look darker. Yeah, just get rid of the eye properly. What's that, a red skull? <laughs> just the eyes that I'm happy with. I'm going to do that on all of them. And loads of red skulls. Now I'm going to go with some Warlock Purple, which is an old paint. Um, again, I'm really going to go out here a little bit. So what I'm going to do with this, is I'm going to paint all the wiring. Just brush it over like that, because I want to try and keep that little space in the middle with their individual wires. But again, with the black undercoat, it's really going to help it. And I'm going to get this big wire as well. Sorry, back in the camera. Some people are going to panic at this point and go, oh, John, what in hell? Don't worry, I love this colour. It's an amazing colour because it really does. It's an old paint, but it goes on so bright and just dulls itself down really well. looking and I can just go over it and just just touch it here and here and there to add a little bit more Do the rest of those guys. Right. I like this actually because you can see it, but you can't actually see it. So it's, it's teasing a little bit. So now I've got some moot green, which is the airbrush paint, um, on the wet palette. And I've watered it down, and now I'm going to bring it in, just slam it into the middle here. So this water down, it should go into the recesses. A little slab in there, and now we have some some mad crazy weaponry going on. You could just paint the whole thing with moot green, that's not a big issue. So just put this down a little touch more. Because I want it to flow straight into there. Be 
if there is water down, it will go into the bits I want it to go into. So I'm going to do that on the rest of them. Just do that more quickly, just very quick. Straight through to mid all those dots. Make sure it just slips in there. Right now, these guys are about ready. Now, you could dry brush their weapon silver, okay, to give you a nice little silver effect. I usually paint them corn red. See, my Necron Warriors, the, the, the weapon barrel is corn red. I didn't do that with these guys, and I'm going to leave it as a black undercoat, it's because I, the, the head's red. But what I'm going to do now to go the next step further. I'm going to wet my brush down, take some wet scars white, water it right down. I'm going to take one guy and I'm just going to try and just not, not fully, try to get each dot as I can. If I get it great, if I don't, it doesn't matter, it's not a big issue. So wet scars white is a layer of paint. So it will dull down. Don't do it too much. And then what I'm going to do is going to give it a gentle dry brush. I say dry brush, it's a wet, I've put all the paint down so it's not a dry brush. That might be a fail actually, I might have messed it up on this section. Wipe it away because it is still wet. And I did water it down. Just leave it the purple the way it is. And not mess with the purple. Let's try it again. I'm going for the dots only. I think I should have uh, my idea of dry brushing that with the white. No, that's not a so I'll just turn it to my goodness me, I'm losing the plot here. Well, I'm gonna go off camera and do the rest. I'll come back to you then. Right, they are done. I, mean, I, could, I could go do a few other bits pieces and then do more to them, but I don't need to. I mean, I could do, as I said, the gun barrels could be silver. I could paint them a to contrast in colour to the green and to the purple and to their cells. I could get some else like a red and just layer up their heads if I wanted to. I could even take some moot green and just do the eye sockets on each of them and just try and get it outside the eye socket to give it a nice little glow. I don't need to. Um. The idea with this one with the, the white dry brush on the purple, I started doing it. No, I didn't like the idea, didn't like it straight away. It looks good on cloaks and stuff like that, but not on piping. But it'll probably dry and I'll probably look at it and go, Oh, actually, <laughs> as is the, always the way. So, if you've enjoyed this video, guys, if it's helped you in any way, please like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Um, any comments or, or anything you want to talk about, chuck a comment below. You know, and I, I'll address it. Until next time, I'll show you some pretty pictures now. But until next time, take it easy, guys.